back here at the garage shop and we're gonna show you this uh, 1988 Aero Coupe Monte Carlo driven by Harry Gant. It's something that some of you may not know. It's where it says Burton Hal's. Uh, the team owners were Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham, who that's where the whole bandit thing comes from. This car is mechanically restored, but visually original. And that's just freaking really cool. You know, people make, make all kinds of ridiculous noises. So this is how it was. Exactly how it was. It's even got the old radio in there. This is it. This is what a cup car looks like in 1988. Real deal Aero Coupe. Old uh, GM ignition boxes. So number one, number two. Wow. This chassis, I'm sure, is older than 88. But I thought you said there was an 85 chassis. Yeah, the, it may have been. Uh, we don't actually know for sure, but. It had been heard that this chassis was built in 85. Somewhere it came with a piece of paper that said all the stuff, but nobody can find it. So that's cool. You can see it's got factory um, factory bumpers on here. Like this is a factory body panel stuff that you just did rivets over the taillight holes. Factory metal in there too. And the original uh, antenna stub. I don't know what kind of car is this is like a road course or a short track car because it has these uh, these ducks in here. I think it's cool that it's untouched cosmetically and you can still see the spider webbing and the paint and stuff. Yeah, this is like this was the paint that was on there before. Like it's not redone final. <laughs> Somebody had this thing and. 88 maybe it was raced and then redone to be fresh as a show car or something and then it got shoved in a garage somewhere and sat we uh have some footage of this thing making noise at the track rental that we did after we put the petty car together um which is another build series that you should check out it rained but you can still hear the the engine in here make noise i don't know what to pull on to get the hood up i don't want to pull on the wrong thing let's pull on this those should just lock back the other way yep it's a period correct 18 degree small block chevy and 18 degree refers to the valve angle and the heads factory heads are 23 degrees um these ones are 18 because it flows more air man if metal could talk This thing just sounds so freaking cool. Like I, I thought SB2 sounded really good, but this is like, the, I think 18 degree small block with this kind of exhaust and race gas is just, it's a visceral experience that you just have to be there to see it. Gant driving the school bandit car. You would think that they look like Burt Reynolds, but they do not look like Burt Reynolds. <laughs> but Harry Gant was the man. He was the man, but he like he doesn't look as like gruff and tough as you would think he looks. No, they call him Handsome Harry. Yeah. I wonder what he's doing these days. I don't know what this little cooler thing is in the back. That doesn't look like it's from the 80s, but maybe it is. But that little motor thing a little squirrel cage blower that's definitely a 80s electric motor oh this is so cool you can see the rivet holes in there from crush panels from other bodies that were put on there this is what they would do say so they call it a crush panel because this part is like part of the chassis obviously this is just the body so if you get hit or something this panel in here gets crushed and you replace it or you, it, it's used to fill in the gap between the chassis and the body. So every time a car would get rebodied, there would be more holes in the wheel tubs where the crush panel would go in to fill it back in. I guess this was before they had holes in the window to do the wedge from outside the car. I wonder when that started. That is like, 
I don't know if this is a factory floor pan or if they use the the 65 Ford ones during this, but it's a clearance there for the truck arm. There's a nice vent here that goes to uh, a driver and a wooden gas pedal. I'm gonna check that out. You like the block of wood or the gas pedal? <laughs> That's pretty wild. Oh wow, oh, sorry. I just, just pulled my elbow back to point at something and she was right behind me just like elbowed you in the throat. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can see that there's a box, um, we'll go look at that, that has overspray on it from the chassis like that was older than this paint is. I won't open the trunk, I wanna see what's in the trunk. What does that say? Electric voltage regulator. It's not even wired to anything, but it's still there. That's really cool. Oh, maybe when this thing was raced, it was raced at one point, it was actually chassis grader weight in here. Yeah, this is all like, don't touch these, don't pull on them, like super fragile. This factory front glass right here. It's got the AS1 line on it from back when they actually used factory glass, at least front glass. This is Lexan. Oh, that's heavy. That doesn't open very far because of the, the aero cube glass. Oh, no way. This trunk was probably a regular Monte Carlo trunk and then it got, it got cut and shortened when this chassis was converted to aero cube stuff. That's really cool. That has to be because they don't come like that. That's been cut and rolled. But it is a factory trunk. See all the stamping in there. Yeah, that's cool how they like made it, made it work. Yeah. The wood. Particle. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> they got some more plywood insulating the, the fuel cell. And this is where the, you know, like the weather stripping would go on a factory car. This trunk, they get where the lock would be. Oh, it's a prop rod. Yeah, is there a hole for it? Right here. <laughs> that would Yeah, let's get a better look at this. That's hilarious. That this this the range of motion on this trunk is just abysmal. <laughs> you can't do anything with that. It'd be funny to like take this thing to go get groceries or something. <laughs> yeah. Making a stock car of this era street legal would be so freaking easy because you could just put the factory lights back in it and then put covers on them. Like this body was aero coupe body because it's got this kind of stamping that matches the window shape but i wonder what all these extra holes were for like brackets that mounted the window or maybe it had glass that went down farther at one point they had to do lots of different variations to see what worked yeah i, I don't know and that that thing back here's been banged up this trunk lid was probably uh left over from a different car or maybe when they did the aero coupe conversion on this chassis they just reused the trunk from a non aero coupe car because it already had the it was already hogged out already had the spoiler on it and all that stuff so they just reused that as opposed to starting from a factory fresh um deck lid you know what i think we should do what? we should go look at the trunk of the daryl waltrip car because it's not an aero coupe and see what it looks like compared to this one just for reference yeah so i think this car what is this, like a 83 i don't know there used to be a thingy with this one too it's not there this trunk is oh there's the thingy uh, they probably had it somewhere it's got a prop rod <laughs> yeah see this they took the other one and then cut it right here and just squished all these in and rolled the edge over yeah, that's very cool. But you can see that this in here stayed the same too because that, you know, that was all just covered up by the, the new window area. Yeah. This factory lid is cut this out, whatever. I think it looks better as an aero coupe. It definitely does. It's got, aero coupes are just cool. A lot of these cars got converted to aero coupes either with the whole body or just, you know, taking this part and putting it on there. Also interesting to note, you know how much taller the front 
clip is on this and the other car like the the older one's really really low slung this one's a lot higher and it's got more more filler in down here it's very interesting there's more rivet holes in here man i wish i wish we knew more about this thing Just something random and notice these rubber pads to kind of help the hood stay up keep it structure because i think this is a it's a factory skin somebody chime in the comments i don't know if they came that way from the from the manufacturer or I if they were highly doubt that or if they were perfectly gutted out by the teams after the fact they had to have been i don't know i mean this is all you know done by the team but i don't know if the skin is just shipped as like a floppy old skin and then they they do their own bracing in it but it's very you know there's not a whole lot here so it would probably buckle with a lot of downforce on it at high speed. They probably have someone learned that the hard way, I'm sure. And this has uh, the Pontiac Brodix heads on it. From what I know, the Pontiac heads were like the best ones of this 18 degree era. And they were made by Brodix for Pontiac racing, like the NASCAR stuff. But because they all used regular small block Chevys, Chevys used them too because they were they figured out they were good. We have Brodix heads on the Escalade too because they've been around since like 1965 and do cool stuff like this that you don't see from newer uh, newer places on the market now. What is uh, this for? Oil heater. Oh. Yeah, dry sump. Huh. Yeah, heat the oil. So it doesn't hurt the hurt the bearings or anything. You don't have to leave that in there. I was just really confused because it looks like a Home Depot extension cord. It does. It's <laughs> and these are Ford uh, master cylinders, I think from like an old F-250 or something. Just regular parts store stuff. And then these teams would make these canisters that screw in there, you know, to space the cap up to hold more fluid, which I think is pretty cool. They, I think they use those still, maybe, or until very recently. And we also have a video on this Daryl Waltrip hauler. If you haven't seen that, you need to go check that out. There was a bunch of really cool stuff in there. It took us like a day to get it all out. We went all through it. Um, basically what that was is Daryl moved shops or offices or something in the 90s, packed up a bunch of stuff in this truck and it just got left there. It was untouched. So you're gonna wanna go see that. And you can also find these guys on their own channel up at the garage shop, so check them out too. So before we get to the exhaust clips, uh, we just wanted to show you the kind of classic NASCAR inspired stuff that we have on our website, stableandautoworks.com, that you can get like this hat that I'm wearing, which is dogs making noise in the background. He chooses now to make noise. Yeah, chooses now to make noise. Um, it's inspired by the old Robert Gates Racing logo. And we have that in a shirt too. We also have an old DW Tribute Western Auto shirt then the front looks like this. We have it in hoodie form too. This is one of the hoodies. It's like real nice Under Armour type material. I am wearing one, except yeah. not the DW one. Yeah, that's the one of the OG flag ones. Yeah. yeah, we got those too. And we got hats with that logo on there also. That's like, that's our main logo. And these uh, 1988 Dale Earnhardt Pit Crew inspired shirts we got on there too. And some of the larger sizes were sold out of XL and stuff. We got something in every size up to 6X. For those kinds of things and we got decals like these ones that's part of our kind of christmas display it gets messed up because we suck <laughs> we tried we just moved in here so it's been rough if you're new every here every time i fix something somebody messes it up so it's just so somebody it is what it is somebody than me no one else comes in here she's talking about me, me. <laughs> <laughs> i was yeah. like oh the fake snow i'm gonna come step on it and put footprints all over it because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> because Logan is struggling and Logan ran out of fake snow and ran, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know the camera was on. <laughs> it was funny. Okay, so our Christmas tree looks absolutely awful because I told Mitchell like a month ago that I wanted to do this. He did not want to get a Christmas tree or lights or anything or be prepared. And then they were sold out of everything. And now we have this really half-assed Christmas tree or we didn't have enough lights. Or enough fake snow for it so now it's like five days until christmas or whatever <laughs> no big deal it's still not done but we have this really cool christmas sweater 
limited edition, one run only. We still have some on the website, but not very many. So, yeah. And Christmas is my favorite. Yeah, if uh, we're going to the post office every day. So if you order one quickly, you can still probably get it before Christmas. If it wasn't hot today, I would have worn this because I don't care. I was wearing it, this sweatshirt now because it is cold in here now. <laughs> I would have worn it. I've worn it every day since we picked them up. Yes, you have. You can find that at stabledandautoworks.com. Go check it out. And cue cool exhaust sounds now. slippery no it was just it's obviously you're not gonna get in it when it's that wet like that but what was just strange it was going that at that slow like that around there I never turned that car to the left even though you're going around this I had to turn it to the right to get it to go up the bank huh which was, I was not expecting that's huh. neat one air in the see what he thinks you know that engine is mad it's like let me go I want to go now yeah. floor it floor it bitch I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> 